All right, guys, there it is. The time has come. I have taken them out of the storage facility and well, you're not supposed to see that, but whatever. I still haven't put up those lights yet, but. Anyways, on to today's video. I just figured I would show you guys. Long time coming, missed them. I missed you. What's going on guys how are you doing today so it seems we have some more interesting information actually we got a really cool picture of darth vader from kenobi so so let's get right into it holy sith exclusive first look at darth vader and obi-wan kenobi and they actually interviewed hayden christensen too this is a prequel fan's dream i can't believe we're actually getting this we're going to see a very powerful vader promises a returning Hayden Christensen. We already showed you the exclusive first look images of Ewan McGregor's return as the cloaked Jedi Master in Obi-Wan Kenobi premiering May 25th on Disney+. Plus. Those images also included the return of Joel Edgerton, Uncle Owen, blah, 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 blah. But McGregor and Ed Edgerton are not the only actors returning to Star Wars franchise for the new series. And Reva and the Grand Inquisitor, seen in the recently released trailer, are not the only Imperial villains on the hunt. Also back is the man under the helmet, Hayden Christensen, who transformed from Jedi Padawan Anakin Skywalker to the dark side villain in the Star Wars prequel films, Attack of the Clones, or Revenge of the Sith. Much like McGregor, it was a 17-year journey to get Christensen back in black to play one of the most iconic figures in the history of pop culture. In our exclusive image above, we see Vader appearing to emerge from his meditation chamber, which begs the question, since the meditation chamber allows the Sith Lord to remove his helmet, as seen in ESB when Admiral Piet briefly admires the back of Vader's head, might this mean we will catch a glimpse of Vader without the mask and Kenobi. I wish I could tell you. <clears throat> I wish I could tell you. Christensen tells EW with a coy smile on his face. I'm sworn to secrecy. As for the kind of Dark Lord we'll see in the series that helps fill in the gaps of time between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope, Christensen is more straightforward. We're going to see a very powerful Vader, promises the actor. While it sounds like there is a chance we may see Vader unmasked, how much Vader in general will we actually see on the show? His shadow is cast across so much of what we do series writer Joby Harold teases. And the degree of proximity to that shadow is something that we'll discover. But he is very much a part of the show emotionally for Obi-Wan and possibly beyond that as well. So, okay, I don't really like this too much. I mean, I do, but it, him being a shadow, that's kind of like what they said in Rogue One. And while we did get bits of him in Rogue One, which were cool, we didn't get, you know, it wasn't like all that much, which is fine. You know, it makes it a little bit more special when he does show up. However, I would like to see more Vader in this show, obviously, than Rogue One. I'd like to see almost as much Vader as I do Kenobi in this. And I know we're probably not going to get that, but if we do, that'd be really cool. And I love that Hayden's back, you know. Uh, it, he played Anakin, in my opinion, so freaking well, and I don't think a lot of people really understood why he played him the way he did. It's not that his acting was clunky or lame, it's just the fact that he was literally trying to sound like Darth Vader, and he was going off of George Lucas's cues, which really will then entie Vader's character with Anakin, and you can understand why they both sound, they have the same cadence and same monotone personality sometimes. That coupled with the fact that Anakin was really subdued as a kid. I mean, he was a slave to Watto, slave to the Jedi, and then a slave to his emotions, and then a slave to Sidious and the dark side, and then he dies. Like, what joy really is the guy going to have? Like, he's not going to be like, hey guys, how's it going? I can't wait to go on another Clone Wars death trip. Like, no, he's going to be, you know, how he was. And I think he played that really well. I don't think he deserved any of the hate that he got. Now, a few years ago, I made a video called why Hayden Christensen played Anakin perfectly. I will prove it to you. If you want, go check that out for yourself. I'll link it down below. Now, as for this photo itself, this, of course, is Lord Vader in his meditation chamber. Now, a lot of you might think, well, this is the one from Rogue One where, uh, you know, we see his back to tank. Sure, maybe his back to tank was in there, but we can see the top of the meditation chamber, I think, here. Or perhaps this is another room entirely, or... Maybe when it gets to Rogue One, he switches this out for a back to tank and upgrades or something. But this is most likely Vader's castle, I'm thinking, which means we could see him on Mustafar. This is only uh, 10 years before uh, Rogue One, essentially. So at this point, Vader is very much in the dark side. He has his castle established. He's got his lightsaber. He's got all that stuff. We bypassed 10 years of the comics and uh, where Vader was just, you know, essentially learning how to be a Sith, learning how to move in this me mechanical robot body. And I think this is going to be something that's really cool to see with Vader. I'm trying to see if he has red eyes or not. And I'm hoping that the show is really going to evolve his character in general so that we'll be able to see more of who Vader is. And not just as this like towering clunky figure, 
but more so as a very distressed, depressed, and sad being who's also extremely powerful with rage, you know, at the same time. But, you know, to really understand the heart of Vader, deeply understand more what is behind that mask, because we can't see any of the emotions. So how do we connect that to the Anakin Skywalker, which is now Vader? And this is 10 years in between both films. So it's kind of like, if he, at this, this point, he's like half Anakin, half Vader. If he's full Vader almost, by A New Hope, there's a lot of Anakin in him still right now. And I think that's going to be really fun to explore. I think that's the most fun point for Vader. Uh, in my opinion. Now, as for seeing Vader without his mask on, it's funny enough, I made a video about this last week. So the thing with seeing him without his mask on is going to be pretty sweet because we actually get to see Hayden Christensen in the makeup, you know, without the mask. And we haven't seen that since Revenge of the Sith when he was burned up and scarred. So, and I think that's going to be something really important to tie into the character of Vader and really connect Anakin Skywalker into Vader now. And I think that's one of the things that they really need to drive home with this show is that it's not just about, you know, Vader, the big bad trying to kill Kenobi. It's really about the struggles behind Vader, the Anakin Skywalker that still lingers within him. And this was the whole issue with Vader, right? He was never fully committed to the dark side. He was doing his best. He was pretty damn near close to being 100% evil, but there was always that little bit of Anakin within him. And this is what the Emperor always sniffed within Vader and here, why he always tried to find a different apprentice. He was always trying to replace Vader with somebody else. And in, in the end, he found Luke and he was trying to turn Luke because he's like, Oh my God, this is the actual son of Skywalker. This could maybe be the one that I need who didn't lose to Obi-Wan, who didn't lose all of his limbs and burn up and lose his powers. So maybe now this is my second chance to actually get the next best thing, which is the son of the chosen one. And that was really why he was so adamant on turning Luke to the dark side. And when he didn't, you know, he was like, well, then now you will day so this is epic man i'm very very excited i don't think i've ever been excited for star wars like this since revenge of the sith this is a great day we're finally getting some vader stuff and uh you know what we're going to see in probably a two months time is going to be ridiculous it's going to be bonkers so hey i'm here for it i hope you guys are here for it too hope you enjoyed this little vid and uh, my two cents have a great rest of your day and i'll see you in the next one until then remember the force will be with you always